Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. There are two different NASAs. One group is the people who sent us to the moon, and the other group are the people known as climate scientists. In 2012, a group of scientists, astronauts, and engineers from the Apollo program sent a letter to the NASA administrator. NASA Global Warming Stance blasted by 49 astronauts, scientists who once worked at agency. Is NASA playing fast and loose with climate change science? That is the contention of a group of 49 former NASA scientists and astronauts. On March 28, the group sent a letter to NASA Administrator Charles Boulding Jr. blasting the agency for making unwarranted claims about the role of carbon dioxide in global warming. We believe the claims by NASA and just NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies that man-made carbon dioxide is having a catastrophic impact on global climate change are not substantiated, especially when considering thousands of years of empirical data, the group wrote. With hundreds of well-known climate scientists and tens of thousands of other scientists publicly declaring their disbelief in the catastrophic forecast, coming particularly from the GIST leadership, it is clear the science is not settled. I frequently hear from climate alarmists things like, who should I trust, you or the people who went to the moon? Which is pretty funny because a lot of the people who went to the moon actually agree with me. Also interesting to note is that there are tens of thousands of scientists who have publicly declared their disbelief in catastrophic global warming. For some reason, the press is never able to locate any of these tens of thousands of scientists. Climate alarmists simply pretend we don't exist. It isn't clear to me why NASA ever got into climate forecasting, but let's look at some of their history. July 9th, 1971, Washington Post, U.S. scientist sees new ice age coming. The world could be as little as 50 or 60 years away from a disastrous new ice age, a leading atmospheric scientist predicts. Dr. S.I. Rasool of NASA and Columbia University says that. So a new ice age is going to start 50 years from 1971. Better get your long johns out, that's coming up pretty quick. We're having our coldest day this early in the fall on record here in Boulder, Colorado today, so maybe he was right. In the Washington Post article it said, In the next 50 years, the fine dust man constantly puts in the atmosphere by fossil fuel burning could screen out so much sunlight that the average temperature could drop by 6 degrees. So 50 years ago, fossil fuels were going to cause a new ice age. Now they're going to cause catastrophic global warming. The powers of fossil fuels are simply incredible. Now let's fast forward 15 years to 1986. NASA's James Hansen gave his first testimony to Congress in 1986 about the greenhouse effect. And he gave projections of future heat at eight major U.S. cities in the year 2030. Let's look at those projections. Memphis would experience 145 days a year with temperatures surpassing 90 degrees, compared to 65 degrees now, and 42 days above 100 degrees compared to 4 now. Let's see how Hansen did. Covington, Tennessee is the closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Memphis, and the number of 90 degree days there has plummeted. Same story with 100 degree days. They were fairly common in the 1930s, and 1950s, and the 1980s, but they almost never happen anymore. Hansen got his forecast for Memphis exactly backwards. Now let's look at his forecast for Denver. Denver, which almost never registers temperatures above 100 degrees, would do so on 16 days a year under the projection, and its 90 plus days would rise from 33 to 86. The closest U.S. Historical Climatology Network station to Denver is located right here in Boulder. Let's see how Hansen did. Our hottest summers were in the 1950s, then things cooled after that, and they've warmed up some since 1990. We're still getting in the range of 30 to 40 days over 90 degrees per year, just like we did when Hansen made his forecast. 100 degree days here peaked in the 1950s and are pretty rare now. We've only had two in the last seven years. Hansen failed for Denver, too. Now let's look at Chicago. In Chicago, the number of over 90 days would jump from 16 to 56, while six days would see temperatures above 100 degrees, a rarity today. The closest U.S. Historical Climatology Network station to Chicago is located at Aurora, Illinois. The number of 90-degree days there has plummeted to record lows. 
Same story with 100 degree days. They were pretty common prior to 80 years ago, but they almost never happen anymore. So another massive fail for James Hansen. Next, let's look at Hansen's forecast for Dallas. Dallas, which already gets 100 days over 90 degrees and 19 over 100 degrees, would see the first figure grow to 162 and the second to 78. The closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Dallas is located at Weatherford, Texas. The number of 90 degree days there has plummeted to record lows. And the same story for 100 degree days. So far, Hansen is batting 0 out of 4 with his predictions. Next, let's look at Hansen's forecast for Los Angeles. Los Angeles would see the number of 90 plus degree days move up from 5 to 27, while 4 days would register more than 100 degrees compared to 1 day a year currently. It isn't clear to me what he meant by Los Angeles. Downtown Los Angeles is much hotter than that, so he was probably referring to the airport which is over by the coast. The closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to the LA airport is located in Newport Beach. Newport Beach hasn't seen any change in the number of 90 degree days, and they haven't had a 100 degree day in decades. Hansen is batting 0 for 5 so far. Now let's look at his forecast for New York. In New York, 4 days would exceed 100 degrees annually, while in most years now no days are that hot. The number of 90 degree days would rise from 15 to 48. The number of 90 degree days in New York peaked in the 1980s and early 1990s around the time when Hansen made his forecast, but have dropped off sharply since then. Generally the trend has been downward since the 1930s. The number of 100 degree days in New York peaked in the 1950s and 1960s during their great droughts, but has dropped off to pretty close to zero in recent years. Current scorecard, Hansen is batting 0 out of 6. The New York Times is undaunted, however, by reality. They say, it's not your imagination. Summers are getting hotter. Extraordinarily hot summers, the kind that were virtually unheard of in the 1950s, have become commonplace. Wait a minute, the 1950s were the hottest summers on record in New York. The New York Times is all the fake news which is unfit to print. Next, let's look at Hansen's forecast for Omaha. Omaha would see 86 days hotter than 90 degrees compared to 37 today. Days over 100 degrees would jump from 3 per year today to 21 in 2030. The closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Omaha is located at Ashland, Nebraska. And as you can see, the number of 90 degree days has absolutely plummeted there to record lows. And the same story with 100 degree days. They were quite common prior to 50 years ago, but over the past 50 years they've become very rare, and there's been none in the last 7 years. James Hansen and NASA are now batting 0 out of 7. Hansen's final forecast was for Washington, D.C. He said the number of days above 90 degrees would rise from 36 to 87 per year, well, over 100 degree days would jump from 1 annually today to 12 in the year 2030. The closest United States Historical Climatology Network station to Washington, D.C. in Virginia is located at Purcellville. There are a couple stations which are closer in Maryland, but they don't have good long-term records. At Purcellville, the number of 90 degree days has plummeted to record lows. And the same story for 100 degree days. They peaked in 1930 and 1931 and they almost never happen anymore. Hansen got every single one of his forecasts wrong. But facts don't matter to the New York Times and they're still running exactly the same story. Here's a story they ran last year. How much hotter is your hometown than when you were born? See how days at or above 90 degrees Fahrenheit have changed in your lifetime and how much hotter it could get. We just looked at that in detail, and everything they said in this 2018 article was the exact opposite of reality. And at the top of the page they said, Climate like a terror movie, how climate change will cause more simultaneous disasters. This is pretty lame headline writing. It's not even worthy of the tabloid section at the supermarket. One group which has learned is the Union of Concerned Scientists. They have quit pimping actual 90 degree days and started using feels like 90 degree days. Because with climate alarmists, everything is about feelings rather than reality. So how did The Guardian react to Hansen's 30 years of failed predictions? Here's what they said. 
climate consensus the 97 percent climate change 30 years later deniers are still lying about hansen's amazing global warming prediction what was amazing about hansen's prediction is that he got every single thing wrong and this 97 percent number is completely fake as the people who went to the moon pointed out there are tens of thousands of scientists who are climate skeptics before i finish up i want to give nasa climate credit for one thing Let's take a look at the NASA paper from 1971 in which they predicted a new ice age in 50 years. The name of the paper was Atmospheric Carbon Dioxide and Aerosols, Effects of Large Increases on Global Climate. The main conclusion of this part of the study is that even an order of magnitude increase of CO2 in the atmosphere by human activities, which at the present rate of input is not expected within the next several thousand years, may not be sufficient to produce a runaway greenhouse effect on Earth. On the short time scale, if CO2 is augmented by another 10% in the next 30 years, the increase in the global temperature may be as small as 0.1 degrees. So NASA's top people have known for 50 years that climate alarmism is complete nonsense. And the reason that Hansen's forecast failed so badly is because they were based on the superstitious belief that carbon dioxide controls the climate. We should listen to the people with the right stuff who got us to the moon and put an end to NASA's climate junk science, which is largely the basis of the EPA's CO2 endangerment finding, which threatens our future energy supply. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.